Okay, it's the second video of the night from Dr. Soloway. Um, I'm still in my mobile office. It's getting a little dark out here, but let's see if I can find some light. This would be terrible if I have no light. Okay, good. That should be enough light, but everyone knows what I look like anyway. So, um, just got a couple of requests to talk about autoimmunity of Crohn's disease. Let's see. So, I don't know too much about Crohn's disease, but I'll tell you what I know. Um, Crohn's disease is a granulomatous disease that can involve any part of the body with a predilection for the small intestine. Uh, it's often found in the terminal ileum and granulomas, which are uh, collections of cells, they tend to infiltrate areas. So if the granulomas infiltrate the liver, you're going to have a bad liver. If they infiltrate the small bowel, you're going to get diarrhea and cramps and uh, ab abdominal pain and bloating. If they infiltrate the colon, you're going to get a lot of diarrhea. You can also get diarrhea if it infiltrates the small intestine. People think diarrhea is only um, related to the colon, but in fact it's related to the small bowel, it's related to the pancreas. There's many, many, many um, causes for diarrhea. But as Crohn's disease relates to autoimmunity, or at least to rheumatology, the arthritic manifestations of Crohn's disease are such that I can diagnose a patient with Crohn's disease merely based on their x-ray findings or their clinical history under the right scenario. So what would be the right case scenario? Well, the right case scenario would be somebody who's uh, either in the office or the hospital with a swollen knee for absolutely no reason whatsoever. And the evaluation for Lyme and Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever and lupus and rheumatoid arthritis and hepatitis C and all those other problems are found to be negative and we find out that the patient has um, diarrhea, bloody stools and then they get tested either by the gastroenterologist or maybe I order antibodies. There is an antibody referred to as the ASCA antibody. There are two of them. If they're extremely high they typically correspond to a diagnosis of Crohn's disease. Now in Crohn's disease the arthritic picture is similar to ankylosing spondylitis or psoriatic arthritis. You can, in, you can get involvement of the distal joints, the ones near the fingernails. You can get um, involvement of big joints, namely the uh, ankle, knee, shoulder, elbow, hip, and it's usually between two and five joints. It's usually asymmetric, so right ankle, left knee, right hip, um, left elbow, right shoulder, right wrist, something like that, but not six joints. It would be between two and five joints. So if somebody has one of these patterns that I've just described, or if they have uh, spinal pain in the morning when they wake up for no reason with prolonged stiffness, uh, if they have x-ray changes in the thoracic spine or the sacroiliac joints, uh, these would be features. Okay, so now we have the person with Crohn's disease. They have either bowel involvement or joint involvement or both. The interesting thing in Crohn's, as opposed to ulcerative colitis, is in Crohn's the arthritis and the um, bowel does, the, the involvement of the bowel and the involvement of the joints goes hand in hand. So worse, worse diarrhea equals worse joint pain. This is not the same in ulcerative colitis where the two are not uh, necessarily reliant upon each other. So. For treatment, we use a lot of the drugs that we use for rheumatoid arthritis. We use TNF inhibitors predominantly. Um, there's a drug referred to as Intivio. This is called an Integrin inhibitor. And by inhibiting uh, this product Integrin, that allows the medication, which by the way is not necessarily better than TNF inhibitors. Frankly, I don't think it is. I've used uh, them both. The Integrin inhibitor blocks um, Integrin which is um, something involved in the inflammatory cascade for inflammatory bowel disease, either Crohn's or ulcerative colitis, to my understanding, and it blocks it from going into the bowel itself. So it can be helpful at a local level. When I say local, I mean at that spot. However, the likelihood of it controlling the arthritis is, is limited. So we have to go back to our TNF inhibitors, our Remicade, our, our ARIA, ARIA, sorry, 
uh, Golimumab, um, Infliximab, Simsia. Simsia is a great choice because you can use it in pregnancy. Frankly, you can use them all in pregnancy, but Simsia is the only one that's FDA approved to be uh, properly administered or you know legally administered during pregnancy. Um, I hope this fills some gaps. Uh, don't forget, uh, ring the bell, um, sign up, be a subscriber, uh, give me more topics. It's exciting to do these. I'm happy I can educate so many people. Um, if you don't like my videos, I suggest you don't watch them, but there's no people out there like that, are there? Um, I'm trying to be funny. Don't, don't be mad. Anyway, uh, hit that bell, subscribe, tell your friends, and um, have a great night. This is our last video for tonight. Okay, bye.